What is up guys? We're back with another BIOS video and today we're checking out the BIOS here on the MSI MAG Z790 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4 motherboard. Now this BIOS should be pretty much the same across all of MSI's Z790 boards. Obviously, depending on the board, you might have a couple different settings or the BIOS might look a little bit different, but overall the functionality should be the same. Now, if you're wondering, how do I get into this BIOS? Like, how do I get to this screen? All you have to do is just keep on hitting the delete key on your keyboard when you power on your system and you'll be dropped right here into the BIOS. And when you get dropped into the BIOS, you will be in easy mode. So this just makes it super simple to change a bunch of different settings. So at the top, we have information on what we're running. We have some stats here as far as temperatures and voltages. We have our CPU speed and of course our time and our date. Over here, we have game boost. So that's like a instant overclock. So you can click that to overclock your CPU. And then we have our XMP profiles. So if your memory does support XMP and it does have XMP profiles, all you do is just click it. And when it's red, that means that your XMP profile is enabled and you're good to go. Over here, we have boot priority. So if you need to set your boot priority, all you do is drag and drop these. It's, it's super, super simple to set your boot priority. And again, when you hover over them, it will tell you what they are. So you, again, you can see, you know, which one's which. And again, you can just drag and drop. It makes it super, super simple. And then over here, we just have some information on our CPU, you know, what it's running, all that kind of stuff. If we click over to memory again, we can see our memory, you know, what it's running, the XMP profiles that are on it. Storage, same thing. We can see all of our storage devices over here. You know, it does list these little dots right here. If you click on them, they do list your SATA devices. And then on this side, you have your M.2 devices. So if you're wondering like, where's my M.2 drive? I don't see anything. You just click this little uh, circle right here and you'll see your M.2 devices. Fan info just gives you information on your system fan, the curves, all that kind of stuff. Um, the fans that you do have installed. Now, if you click this, this brings up our hardware monitor. So this little gear right here, We'll bring up the full hardware monitor where you can set a lot of these things and see the information, you know, all that kind of stuff that's going on with your fans and your pumps and you can see all your voltages and all that stuff in real time. You can do that with the hardware monitor. And then under help, it just gives you, you know, like your shortcuts, like all of your, you know, shortcut keys and things like that. Um, it also shows you what that game boost does, um, you know, it does do the 5.3 gigahertz on the P cores and four gigahertz on the E cores. So it's good to see what the game boost function does if you're not sure. And again, it's all dependent on the CPU that you're running. We have M flash that allows you to easily flash your BIOS. That's how we updated this BIOS to the latest version. We have favorites. You can set favorites in a favorites menu. We haven't set any, but you have favorites menu. Hardware monitor again is the same thing that we already went into, but it's here for you guys to get into it's just super simple and then we have some certain things that you want to enable or disable so cpu fan warning control so if for some reason you're not using a cpu fan you're using something else or you don't have it plugged in or you have it plugged you don't you plug your fan into something else you can turn that cpu fan warning off erp ready you can turn on or off hd audio controller you off one nice thing that's right here is your tpm so again if you're installing windows 11 that TPM does need to be enabled. It is enabled by default, but if you're looking to turn it off for some reason, it's right here. Uh, RAID, you can enable or disable, and then easy LED controls. So this turns off all of the LEDs on the board, um, and I believe all the headers as well. So you can turn that on or off if you want. Now, that is pretty much the easy mode. Like I said, it gives you everything that you need as far as boot priority, XMP profiles. Those are the two main things um, that you're really gonna wanna set. Now, if you wanna go into advanced mode, um, you can just click right here or hit F7 on your keyboard. And we have a full menu of different things here. So we'll go into settings first. And these are all the settings that have to do with the board itself. So system status just gives us information, you know, on what we're running and all that kind of stuff. We go into advanced PCIe, PCIe subsystem settings. You can set your link speeds for your M.2s and things like that. Another thing that is in this menu that you may want to enable is resizable bar support. They, I believe it's enabled by default on this board, but if it's not, you can enable it right here. You can of course go into PCIe uh, and PCI uh, AS, ASPM settings in here as well. 
We have ACPI settings. Again, you can just change those. Integrated peripherals, these are just things that are on the board. So if you wanna turn on or off certain things, your SATA hot plugs, your HD audio controller, um, all of those things you can turn on or off if you wanted to. Integrated graphics, um, if you were using the integrated graphics on your Intel processor, you would set this stuff. Um, Thunderbolt, again, we don't have a uh, Thunderbolt set up, but again, you can you know do that if you wanted to. USB configuration, again, you can turn on or off legacy USB supports, and then all of your ports, you can enable or disable one by one. Power management setup, just certain things to do with power, you can turn on or off. We have uh, BIOS mode, it's gonna be UEFI, you don't really don't wanna run CSM. Uh, wake up event setup, so you can set up wake events if you wanted to. Um, you have secure erase, this allows you to securely erase an SSD. We're not gonna go into it, but you can set that up. And there's also the MSI driver utility installer. So when you first install Windows, it will ask you to install the MSI driver installer. I leave this enabled, some people don't like it. You can enable or disable it, but it's only on your first install of Windows. It won't do it every time you load up Windows. So you can enable or disable that if you want. I'm sure a lot of you want to know um, about the OC settings and we will get into that. There is, um, oops, there is boot settings. So you can go ahead and see everything to do with boot, boot options, boot displays, things like that. Um, security settings, again, you can set administrator password, you can set up um, user password, secure boot, things like that you can set up right here. And then you do have save and exit and there is a boot override. I always talk about this. If you are installing Windows from a flash drive, you wanna do boot override instead of setting the flash drive as your boot device. So then when you do the restart, when Windows installs, you, it doesn't try to boot from that flash drive again. So boot overrides right here, save changes, all that kind of stuff is all right here. Now we will go to the OC settings. This is everything to do with overclocking and tuning your system. So you have all of the settings that you're gonna need for setting P-core ratios, E-core ratios, um, advanced CPU settings. It's all in here for you to set and change your current limits, your short duration power limits, your long duration power limits, all this stuff when it comes to overclocking, it's all right in this menu. Not only for CPU stuff, um, but again, for for your memory, you know, here is where you can enable XMP profile as well. Again, you just get the option right there. Um, all of your timings, advanced uh, DRAM timings is in here as well, so you can set all of that stuff. All of your power settings are in voltages uh, are in here as well. So you set all this stuff. Um, you can set like your load line calibration settings, all of this stuff. And as you see, as I'm hovering over things over here, it tells you about it. So if you're not sure, like what does this setting do? It's all over here in the help section, which is really nice. So again, all of your power settings are here. Oops. And Again, all of your voltages, your memory settings, um, you can see your CPU specs and your CPU technology support in here. You can go in and see your memory information as well and your CPU features. So again, you can enable or disable certain CPU features if you wanted to. And that is pretty much everything that's in OC. Like I said, it has everything that you need for overclocking and system tuning. It's all right here in this simple menu and everything is very easy to find. You have mFlash right here. If you wanted to go ahead and flash the, uh, the BIOS, that's right there. You do have OC profile, so you can save different profiles if you wanted to. You also, again, have that hardware monitor. Same hardware monitor as we saw before. It's graphing everything in real time. Shows us our fan curves, all of that. And then they have this thing called Beta Runner, which just has like the NVMe self-test and some other stuff in it. Um, I didn't really find any of that all that useful. Um, besides that, you also can take a screenshot with F12. That's just what this shows you. You can change the language up here. You can also search. So if I search for like XMP, it brings up like the setting for it, which is nice. So if you're 
kind of, you know, this OC menu can be a little bit daunting if you're looking for something specific, you know, you can just click up here and you can go ahead and find it very easily. We'll go back to the easy mode here. Like I said, this BIOS is very easy to walk through. It The mouse is very responsive. Some BIOSes, the mouse is sluggish. Everything works very well on this BIOS. So if you have any questions about MSI's Z790 BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.